Welcome to Anime Out of Context, a comedy review show where a man completely immersed in anime culture torments his co-host, who is only allowed to watch the shows featured here. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash animeoutofcontext. Alongside over 100 hours of exclusive bonus material, all episodes uploaded to Patreon are completely ad-free, even to non-patrons. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello, and welcome to Anime Out of Context. The show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And don't look now, but there's a man-eating cupcake on the loose. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. You know the people that aren't subscribed to us that are going to see that like, oh, Was that a FNAF reference? <laughs> hey, if you caught that it was a FNAF reference, yes it was. Go subscribe to the Patreon and I'll break your heart. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he didn't say very nice things about that movie, but that's okay. Uh, I wasn't going to see it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but rem we're not here to talk about fnaf uh what we are to talk about rem is it's been a while since i've done this for you okay but i do have a simple question for you that'll help decide what we watch today oh here we go uh hey rem you want a present <laughs> now think very carefully before you answer but do you want a present oh jesus christ all right okay all right i'm uh... You get me all riled up in our pre-banter, and now, all right, okay, all mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I planned it that way. I mean, who can resist the present? Because <laughs> that's never, that's never uh, gone poorly for you in the past, has it? Let's unwrap this son of a bitch! All right. Well, Rem, you've selected to get present, which means that this week, uh, the anime we're not going to be reviewing, uh, I won't tell you what it is. But I will t- oh, okay. I will tell you, on Mal, it had about a 6.7. Oh, Jesus take. Christ. So, so uh, because you wanted the presents, that's not what we're doing, you know? So now okay. we're doing the one that's uh, a 6.8, you see. Yeah, see, you know, thing about presents is you can always get something <laughs> worse, you know? <laughs> and the important thing is when you get a real shit present, you gotta be like, ah, oh, man, this could have been so much worse. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. You know, look, look, their true generosity and kindness as, ah, they could have really fucked this, but they didn't. So thank you. <laughs> that, that's the kind of attitude you should go in whenever you have a birthday or Christmas type celebration. Uh, very, uh, very healthy. Very, very healthy. Uh, but no, Rem, you chose to have presents. So your reward, as you might expect, Rem, is just a lovely present. Uh, because this week, Rem, I'm lazy. Uh, okay. I'm lazy and we need to get our buffer back. So since you chose presents, we're doing a nice, simple revisit. A revisit that has been stupidly requested so many goddamn times by our audience. And I I think our casual listeners will be like, why the fuck are they doing this again? Well, (laughs) because it was requested. And because I needed a break. So, this week, Remington, that's right, it's time to finish it. Also, at the request of your girlfriend, uh, it's time for you to finish season two of Pui Pui Molkar. Hey! Pui, 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 pui. Yeah, and uh, from what I recall, season two actually has more of a storyline overall. Oh, oh wow, all right, Let, let's get into the deep lore, baby. Well, here's the thing, Remington. The deep lore of Pui Pui Molokar? Fuck if I know. <laughs> <It's>, they're, <laughs> they're cars that are guinea pigs, my guy. Hey, don't worry, <laughs> like, Sean, that's why, that's why you brought in the professional. Yeah, so your goal for this episode, Remington, is to give me all the sweet, sweet, juicy details of the lore of the Pui Pui Molkar verse. All uh, right. Well, I mean, what what the fuck are we doing here? Let's just let's just uh, start recording. <laughs> the only thing you need to know is that the second it. season is called Pui Pui Molkar Driving School. Ah, I, I, you know, I might, I might hazard to guess <laughs> what it may be about, what the setting uh, might be. Yeah. Well, hey, and who knows? Maybe the season two will just improve on perfection, or maybe. Maybe, just maybe, this season two will crush your hopes and dreams and expectations. There's only one way to find out, right? I'll be honest, all- if, if it's somehow bad, I'm, I will cry. <laughs> On the podcast? Yes. You're gonna, like, okay, well, we gotta record immediately after I'm done watching, uh, so that uh, we can make sure that the uh, emotions are <laughs> So the are tears are there. felt. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, that's up for uh, you to decide, ultimately, and that's also why we had an extra long pre banter this time around. Uh, <laughs> goes to show. So without <laughs> further ado, gang, let's go watch some Pui Pui Molkar Driving School. Researching topics for the show isn't 
Always as easy as checking reviews, watching the show, and reading a few discussion boards. Sometimes I have to go to some rather unsavory websites. And that's when I have to use my browser's little friend. You know the little guy with a hat and glasses when you open up incognito mode for a little bit of late night, uh, research? That guy has seen some shit. <laughs> Good thing he knows how to keep a secret. Oh wait, he doesn't. Just take a look at the headlines regarding a recent $5 billion lawsuit regarding incognito tracking. Even with Mr. Incognito on duty, every single thing you've ever clicked on is fully visible to anyone who owns your Wi-Fi. Who's that, you ask? Could be any number of things. Your work, your school's IT department, your parents. If that sounds concerning, you probably need ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an easy-to-use app that sends 100% of your traffic through their encrypted servers, so no matter your choice in research or cinema, it cannot be seen by anyone. It's like a super incognito mode that actually works. And speaking of cinema, ExpressVPN also unlocks a ton of new movies and TV shows because you can choose where in the world you want to be. Take the highly acclaimed show The Apothecary Diaries, for example. That show isn't on Netflix in the US, but if you use ExpressVPN to switch your location to Japan, you can watch it there. Solo leveling is another good one. Netflix doesn't have English subs while we're in Japan, but I got them just by changing my location to Singapore Marina Bay. ExpressVPN is also great for Crunchyroll. Unless you're in the US, you're missing out on a ton of shows, but with just one click, I can switch to an American IP address and get the full experience. I can literally go to more than a hundred different countries and watch basically whatever I want on any streaming platform. Plus, ExpressVPN works on all my devices. I can use it on my phone, TV, computer, whatever. So I can watch whatever I want. Everything from Netflix to OnlyFans without the world knowing about it. I love ExpressVPN so much, I even got them to give you an incredible deal. If you use our special link, expressvpn.com slash AOOC, you'll get three extra months completely free. That's expressvpn.com slash AOOC to help support the podcast and get three extra months of ExpressVPN absolutely free. And we are back after watching all 12 episodes of the second season of Pui Pui Molkar, also known as Pui Pui Molkar Driving School. And Remington, did it make you as happy as everyone said it would? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sean, of course. I mean, uh, Pui Pui Molkar is a, a phenomenal show. Okay, so we're done then. That's it. Episode over. <laughs> That's the whole thing. There we go. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, shortest ep That's a record, man. Shortest episode we've ever done. I well, but I mean, obvi obviously, it, it, it's very good. Like, I... But uh, I, that, that, that's not what this episode was ever for, Sean. What was this episode for, Rem? This episode was to dive deep into the world and the lore yes, of Weebly yes. Molkar. I, I did give you that, uh, that, um, that objective, as it were. And, and, and so in order to do so adequately, I, I, I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll just... Uh, I'm going to ask for uh, appropriate music from our lovely editor. Oh my god, we're recording this so late. You're gonna make him kill you. You're gonna make him kill you. Ah, uh, it's fine. It, it's fine. I, I, you know, I, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be appropriate. Uh, and, and without, now that we have the proper music, now we can dive. Not even gonna give him a primer on what music to go for. He'll know. Okay. Sean, yep. on October 8th, 2022, Abby the Molkar used rockets, some say negligently, some say deliberately, to launch a terrorist attack, toppling 18 buildings, including shops, corporate offices, and at least one high-rise hotel. Now, I want to be abundantly clear, this is domestic terrorism, a war crime specifically targeting civilians. Now, afterwards, they are taken to a court of law and found guilty by a jury of their peers. And yet, four months later, December 24th, 2022, they are back on the streets, set to repeat those same mistakes. Uh, um, now what we need to explore, I think the most important thing is first motive, right? <laughs> just... um, because I recognize that there is some, uh, controversy on whether this is just reckless action. Uh, many people think that what happened is that the rockets installed onto Abby the Molkar, they were done for uh, aesthetic reasons, or perhaps just because they're dope as fuck. Uh, and, and while many think that this was a negligent act, I have reason to believe that is not the case. 
You see, Sean, Abby's driver is an otaku. Right. Okay. Oh, buddy. Oh, dear. So we can ask, is this just uh, a reckless, reckless installation uh, and a desire to look cool? Or is it because this otaku has become, an, become alienated and disenfranchised from Japanese society? John, are you familiar with the term hikikomori? Yes, Remington. I'm the one who taught it to you. <laughs> Total withdrawal from society. Uh, it's often associated with beliefs that the external world has very little to meaningfully provide. According to an article written by LK Shiaka 4282 for Tremg News on August 13, 2021, they state, There's no time to find love or enjoy friendships. There's no time to be horny or express yourself when economic efficiency is in the way. And so when you can't sleep at night because you wasted a whole day working for the man, Anime provides the release for all the qualities that make life valuable, and as we, that being a global we, become further alienated from our most human of characteristics, love, intimacy, wonder, anime fills a void we have become too efficient to need. Now we can already see the the roots there of people using such sources as anime and manga as as escapism in light of the, the horrors of, of reality in the world, right? Uh, and, and, and so that, that, that's just one data point. I don't think that's enough to draw any, any large conclusions. For that, we need to go to Martha Crenshaw, uh, who authored a paper titled The Causes of Terrorism. Oh, God! <laughs> she writes about the interplay of commitment, risk, solidarity, loyalty, guilt, revenge, and isolation that can radicalize someone and cause them to be further entrenched into terrorist activity and terrorist groups. So, just think for a moment. Isolation from society is already clear. Solidarity with their fellow otaku. Loyalty to their waifus. A desire for revenge against the world that spurns them. Sean, all of the ingredients are there. We're starting to create quite the psychological frame that makes it abundantly clear. They match the profile, Sean. Now, they're sent to driving school, all right, uh, let, let's see if we can make them better. And yet, Abby's driver clearly doesn't take it very seriously. They get distracted by their waifu in a reckless and negligent manner that endangers the mole car and ruins the learning environment. That happens in episode four. And so we, we can see yet again more and more signs that they aren't taking this seriously. They aren't looking for reform or betterment. No, because they are going to return to that exact same behavior, those exact same patterns. All right. And as we see in the final episode, we do in uh, we almost see a uh, frame by frame those same events take place some will argue but remington the difference is now that they have learned better no buildings are being toppled in episode 12. not yet my friends not yet but do you really feel comfortable with a mere three and a half months of of careless reform uh, by by a domestic terrorist? Do you think that's enough for them to change their ideology? Do you think that their view of the system has changed in any meaningful way in just three and a half months? Now, some might say, Remington, why? Why, after, after such a despicable act, I mean, 18 buildings toppled over. Who knows how many casualties taken there? Only three and a half months, not of jail time, just of driving school. I believe there's some deeply seated corruption in the system. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to uncover that as of yet. Um, I, I think that might be my next investigation. Save that, save that for, for episode two. Oh boy. Nonetheless, Sean, I, I think I've made a, a very clear case of describing this, this tragedy, a psychological profile of the perpetrator, understanding the reasons behind it. Okay. So did you like the show, Rem? Yo, Sean, you know what? Actually, actually, scrap everything I just said. <laughs> everything! Right. Rem, you went on a rant <laughs> for like 10 minutes! <laughs> no, scrap all of that. Scrap all of that. Okay. Pui Pui Driving School isn't a tale about terrorism and an unjust system. No, 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 no. 
Maybe, maybe it's closer to Donnie Darko, Sean. Diving into the surreal in an alternate timeline that increasingly becomes worse and more unraveled before listening to a giant rabbit or perhaps a space rabbit uh, and, and returning things to how they used to be, how they were always meant to be. I mean, it's, obvi it's obvious looking at it that it has to all be a metaphor. Are we really meant to believe, Sean? That, that space rabbits, an orphaned cyborg Molkar trapped perpetually in driving school, a vicious megalodon chasing them down, that all of that was real? Plus, they have shown in Pui Pui Molkar that time travel is already existing in this world. Maybe it's a story about choices, about the butterfly effect, about how our decisions can spiral outward and affect so many others for good and for ill. So, hmm, you know, I wasn't expecting any of this. Um, so the point you're trying to make here is that Pui Pui Molkar, the second season especially, is a drug-induced fever dream from Beyond the Pale? No, 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 that, that, okay, that, that, that's absurd, that's absurd, you know, I, uh, let's, you know what it actually, here's, okay, take three, here's what it is, Sean. Okay, <laughs> oh no. Pui Pui Driving School is an allegory about nuclear warfare, as we see in episode 12, a brief clip of a mushroom cloud exploding upwards into the sky. This is just a, a, a postmodern, uh, a Gen Z recreation of, of the allegory of Godzilla, of, of failed bureaucracy, right? Uh... And, 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 and how those those limitations don't make meaningful systemic change. That's not even what they're after, Sean. Okay. <laughs> um, what are they after then? No, you know what? Actually, no. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Scrapping that one too. Yeah, scrap that one. Okay, scrap that right. one. Uh, so that's that's two big uh, theory crafting that we've scrapped. Uh, third time's the charm. Oh, well, that, I mean, that's three that we've scrapped so far. Okay, so fourth uh, time is the charm, right? Yeah, fourth time is the charm, as I've always said. The um, number of death, four. That's how things end. Ex exactly. You know, number of death, perhaps we're talking about the death instinct. Perhaps it's actually deeply psychological. Not just psychological, psychoanalytic. Uh, we're going back to Freud, all right, where the whole show explores the id, ego, and super ego. The, the city is in some cutesy Japan. No, what this is, is, is uh, an insight of the mind. That's what it's all a metaphor for. Uh, and it's all about balancing our primal desires against the societally enforced rules, norms, and regulations placed upon us externally, Sean. Okay. So it's back to Freud. Um, and isn't it always? <laughs> I would argue no. I would argue mostly no. Most of the things that get pointed to Freud get pointed at how he did some really bad things and had some really dumb ideas. But those dumb ideas helped be a jumping point for actually good ideas. I don't know, maybe maybe instead of Freud, maybe we go a different psycho psychoanalytic route. Maybe we go more like a, a, a Lacan or... or, or... Uh, let, let's see, we could, we, uh, we maybe go Anna Freud in, instead, maybe we drop to drive theory altogether, maybe we go more object relations perspective, I'm not 100% sure how that fits, maybe it's, it's the fact that what we are, are seeing are not, it's not the actual reality, rather it is the representational objects within the mind, I, I'm not quite sure, it's, it's not fully pieced together yet, Sean, it's not fully pieced together yet. There's still work to be done? <laughs> you know what, I think we're just beginning. <laughs> we're just getting started? <laughs> what, what, what was the past 15 minutes then if we're just getting started you know i came in with such confidence and and maybe it was myth misplaced because maybe maybe what it actually is pui pui driving school sean it's like an ogre Some it's got layers <laughs> see and i've i've shown up and i'm I've, I've delved through, I've, I've crunched through this ogre onion layers, right? And, and, and I thought at each layer, here we go, here we go. Now it's, it's the true thing. Uh, but, but we need to delve deeper into the core. No, but that, Sean, that's it. There is no core to this ogre. I, it's layers all the way down, baby. 
<laughs> and as we delve deeper into to different interpretations, different meanings, hoping to eventually find a bedrock, we never will. Okay. Um, Nietzsche one, once wrote that, that there oh, were no he, facts, I was wondering when he would uh, come into only this. Only interpretations, you see. Uh, uh, no facts, only interpretations. And so as we are looking for some some bedrock to ground us, to say this, this is what it really is, this is where meaning truly lies, we realize that there is no bedrock, Sean. Uh, in Java edition? We're just playing Java. We're going to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And all of that can provide insight. All of that can provide utility. But never will we reach a stage where we can say, now we have it. Now this is what is true and meaningful and right and just. Because there will always be another layer underneath, more layers side to side. At the end of the day, we're trapped in all of these layers. Which means we're trapped inside Trek, Sean. I don't know if that's where I want to be, Ram. I don't want to be inside Shrek. We're trapped deep inside Shrek, and there's no way out. What kind of Amagi fault bullshit is this? This hole was not made for me, damn it. I don't want to go. And so with that, Sean, I, I think I think we found the, the true deep lore of Pui Pui Mokar and Pui Pui Driving School. I need a drink. I... <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe it is a story uh, up about uh, alcoholism, about drug addiction. That, you know, all all vices. Maybe it's a story uh, uh, about how uh, we we get so swept up into things. We look back at that first scene. All right, that that first thing where everything goes wrong, and and we see people uh, focused on 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 jewelry, materialistic goods, on aesthetics, on looking cool. Uh, 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 every, everything we said about Nataku can still apply here, except now, instead of a, a terrorism angle, now it's all about uh, being being so myopic, being so focused on our own vices. Even if we look at what, what Little Potato is doing, you know, helping clean up some some litter and, and do some of that, uh, we, we can view altruism as a kind of, of aesthetic when it is done in, in a public manner, when it is shown to demonstrate how, how virtuous one is. Right, uh, look, look upon my my virtue. Uh, but but even then, right? Um, e even then, can we really call that virtuous, or is it just uh, is it just another vice? I mean, if it was even, it, it's it's like Jesus taught: when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. If you are are to be virtuous, are you doing this as as a display, as an aesthetic? No. So so. All of these, all of these are different vices, and, and that narrow focus can create catastrophes. It doesn't need to be through deliberate action or intention, you see. Uh, but nonetheless, lives can be lost, people can be hurt, people can be affected. And, and so, if we are trapped in our myopia, then it will only be detrimental both to ourselves and the society around us. So, um... How does it feel knowing this is going to be the least listened to episode of our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Because the man is trying to put us down. That's very astute, Sean. That, you know, that, that's very wise. All right, here's what I'm proposing, Sean. <laughs> okay, what are you proposing, Ram? <laughs> Look, the man isn't going to want this to be known. The man is going to try to put this episode down, which is why I'm proposing that we spend all of our podcast's budget on advertising this episode <laughs> from here on out, all right? All, in fact, our personal dollars, too. Uh, I don't know how much savings you got, but I, I think this is a worthy cause. I think I think that nestled within this isn't just the meaning of Pui Pui Driving School. I think we've transcended that. I think we're talking about meaning of life, all right? I think we're talking about the structure of society now, if, if you look deep enough within this episode and, and uncover the layers within this episode, just like the layers of Pui Pui Driving School, then, then I, I think there's a lot to be found. And in so doing, I, I think this might be the noblest thing we've ever done for society. So what you're saying is, is we should get more patrons so that we can fund the, uh, the, uh, the Pui Pui Molkar truth, is what you're saying. Uh, what I think needs to happen is that we get uh, approximately seven to eight billion patrons. <laughs> That's more than there are people on the planet. Seven to eight billion patrons. And then once we are funded truly by the people, then uh, we spend all of that money still advertising. What I, I'm thinking this is more than just 
letting the message out. I, I think this, this episode is what civilization can be founded upon, Sean. So you're suggesting total takeover on the basis of truth of Pui Pui Molkar. Not just Pui Pui Molkar, but then this episode about Pui Pui Molkar. Oh, so we're going a layer higher, I see. Yeah, all about layers, Sean. It's all about layers. It's Pui Pui all the way down. I mean, it was it was Plato who talked about the philosopher kings, Sean, right? And and so one might think, okay, well, who who could be good enough to or or smart enough? I do not claim to be that person. All right, that's not where this is going. I I am not a philosopher king, but maybe we're we're looking at it the wrong way. You cannot find a philosopher king within any flawed individual. You must find it in ideas and in art. And so through this episode, this episode could be a philosopher king in and of itself, Sean. Uh, idea as philosopher transcending the, the numinous realm and, and being brought into to hard reality. Ooh, this, is, this, is, this is a lot to break down, Remington. We've been doing this for six years, and I, I never thought it would reach this point, honestly. Um, I, th- I think this is the culmination of our life's work, Sean. <laughs> this, this, this episode in particular. Yep. Right here, right now. If we're to recommend anybody listen to our show at any point, this is this is the one they should listen to first, foremost, and everything. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, this episode is the only media that needs to exist <laughs> from this point forward. Um, I also think that, uh, Sean, after this, we have two choices. One, we inevitably go downhill. Are you okay? Um, okay, do not put that curse on us, please. Well, we've reached our peak. Right now, right here. I, I don't... I don't... <laughs> Once you reach the summit, it is all down from here. Or two, we simply republish this episode every single week in perpetuity. <laughs> That's the way, Sean. That's I... the way to stay at this summit. That's the way to remain at the peak. All right. I don't. I don't know if we can pull it till death do us blart, Remington. I don't know if that's that's the best way for our future. I <laughs> no, no, because we have till death do us blart. All right, okay. Let let's watch. Paul Bart, Mall Cop, again and again and again and again and talk about it again and again and again and again. That's not what we're doing here, right? Because we're not doing a new review of Pui Pui Driving School every single week. No, what we are doing is this same review every single week. As in re-recording it or just republishing it? Ideally, they wouldn't be able to tell a difference, Sean. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, ha. Oh, God, I... I'm gonna have a stroke. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a... Ooh, there's a... This is a lot to take in, Remington. This is a lot to take in. Um, we still haven't gotten you health insurance. John, who needs health insurance when you have Pui Pui Driving School? That's my counter. Based on our conversation we just had, I think you more than anybody. <laughs> 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 I think I think you're priority numero uno. <laughs> and in order to maintain some semblance of sanity, I think we need to wrap this up and quick, or else who knows where it's gonna go. Uh, Remington, <laughs> what's the mouse score for Pui Pui Car Driving School? Tell me, tell me now. Um, uh, well, you know, okay. So the original series, obviously, a ten out of ten. This one, not quite as good, John. Not quite as good. I'm gonna say it. Okay. Nine point nine. <laughs> 9.9 because i i think that unfortunately the driving school premise it's inherently it, it it restricts them it limits them it boxes them in just like society is boxing us in okay well all right and that's your final guess huh yep okay and what if i tell you that uh, only 2289 people have reviewed this show it reaffirms my confidence <laughs> Well, with with those exact ratings, uh, Pui Pui Molkar Driving School uh, has a rating of 7.18. It's all part of the conspiracy, brother. <laughs> it's the government trying to keep us down? Try, it's trying to keep Pui Pui down, that then will keep this episode down. Don't you see how it's all tied together? But then what does that mean for the movie that's coming out later this year? I, I, I think they're, they're going to try to stifle it. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna quash it before it releases? They're going to try their damnedest. Now I I don't think they'll succeed because I think I think the power the power of Pui Pui is is too strong to ultimately suppress. Uh, the the best they can do 
is restrict some degree of momentum, and I, I don't think that's enough. Okay. But yeah, do I think they'll try? Yeah, of course they will. All right. Well, that's a, that's a lot to take in, Rem. So I guess the final question I need to ask is, is there any chance you want to watch some more Pui Pui Molkar? Maybe the movie down the line? Normally, I would say, of course, Sean, but uh, as previously discussed, the only media that I think will be consumed from this point forward is this episode of the podcast. This and episode so, of Anime Out of Context. This one episode. Yeah, yeah, and so unfortunately, you know, all of everybody's time is going to be filled with that, including ours, so. Oh, I see, I see. Doesn't yeah. leave a lot of room. Yeah, because watching the same form media. of media over and over and over uh, is definitely not going to drive anybody insane and definitely nobody who's ever been on this podcast before they they definitely haven't had that exact experience uh okay hey so nothing cool. has had this many layers sean each rewatch is another layer <laughs> it's it's truly a spiral it's a spiral of molkar <laughs> oh god so yeah episode 306 good to know good to know that's that's where we hit our peak oh fantastic i i i I abhor smoking, but I think I need a cigarette. <laughs> oh, God. So I guess with that in mind, uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoy whatever this was, <laughs> then please... <laughs> <laughs> driving school, also known as the gas leak episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please head on over to wherever you get your podcast and leave us a review. They mean the world to us, and we do read every single one. And if that is not enough for you, twitch.tv slash anime out of context where myself, Dylan, and Remington do occasionally play video games very poorly. And if that is still not enough, patreon.com slash anime out of context where hopefully one day we'll be able to figure out what's going on in Remington's skull. Oh, God. Well, uh, I mean, Sean, I, I imagine that this episode will have a 100% conversion from listeners to... Uh, patrons. I, I have to imagine. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we get a couple thousand can't. listens every week, and all those are going to suddenly become patrons, is what you're saying. Yeah, I can't, I can't really see it uh, shaping up any other way. Look, if we, for whatever reason, got all of our listeners as patrons for just one month, I think we would be set. <laughs> it, 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 it's going to happen, just you wait. Okay. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Once again, the man is going to try to suppress this episode and thus okay, I uh, see. S- suppress those results. But I, I think, uh, I, I think this is it. This is our big break. We have transcended. Um, this is the <laughs> closest to Nirvana that we will ever, this, ever reach. And this is what is going to really uh, set us forward as icons of the people. I see. I'm going to be the so. first result so. when you Google anime podcast. That's just going to be the nature of it. We're, we, this episode will be the first result when you search anything, because we're going we're gonna to get in good with Google, um, and, and eventually it'll just be, it'll be the top post on every website. So, Rem, who are we thanking this week from our Patreon? Well, as always, we would like to send our regards to all of our bland bitch protagonists, as well as our magical girls, who we really appreciate. But moving on, we get to our Yandere waifus, who... Are transcending on with us, you know? And on that list, we have My Name is First Now Bitch. Oops, sorry, I was just overly, overly excited. You're not a bitch. Please don't hurt me. Uh, Zombie Stomp, Xanax, Yummy, Yummy, Cummy, Cummy, in My Tummy, Yummy, Cummy, Yandere Neko, Why Sean, Why Sean, Where's Our DBZ Review, You Ginger Fuck, Wes Kane, Walk Me Home Gently, Viva La Haruhi Revolution, Call to Arms, Fellow Worshippers of Haruhiism, Utah Number One, Unhinged Prax, Tummy Yum Cum, Totally God's Angel. Titan CNH, this show is a ploy to get Joe Biden reelected. The Susanator, the pocket big hole you need in your pocket. The Flying Spaghetti Monster, the Danish Viking will conquer the world with Renor Zoro as my navigator. The Capybara is summoning Mahor- M- Mahoraga to help her sleep. Turban, Super Zeus, Stacy's mom. Spoonman wants to dance but has no EDM music. Drop the album, Rem. Spoonman, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, fighter of the knife man, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Someone ask me to name a greater philosopher than Nietzsche. I can't. Snakey pie. Smoochies for the DM, please. Sh- Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Shoujo addict who doesn't need help. Just more manga to read and anime to watch. Sean wants to give Spoon Man a thank and yank. Sean told me to fuck my sister and now my family won't talk to me. Sean saying it's never going to happen. It's just to you to push harder. He'll break. Sean ruined my happy sugar life when he didn't sing for us like a coward. The people demand a ditty, Sean. Sean puts the bara in Cappy. The Spoon Man comes. Sean, how close... To your throat, man, do you think Spoon Man can get before you gag? <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it is. Sean had a last leg could go all night, but he got out of breath when he had to blow her up. Sean can do-do-do-do these nuts. 
Sarah from the Shark Plushies. So go ahead to Kai, that's what she said. Say hi to that guy's fiance. I think it's Haley. Say hi to Haley's fiance. You know, yeah, we're, we're saying hi to Haley so much, but now it's time to say hi to Haley's fiance. Uh, we, we, we don't know. Uh, we just know it, it's say hi to my fiance, Haley. So it's like, you know. Hi to, to them. Uh, Ross Palmer, Riku the Don Hero, Rhiannon Williams. Renaissance Art is just hentai for snobs. Remington is right. Rem uses the drums of liberation to free all weeps from bad anime. Rem doesn't completely hate my favorite shows. Pro tips out of context, the next time someone tells you the government wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, they would. They already have. Professor Fox, Pockwell Musico. Onichi Ichi, 10 out of 10 family show. Uh, no waifu, no laifu, 907. Nick, Necrodancer 1415. Musical episode guy here with Spoonman to say thanks for the second musical episode. Makeka 7 here to Myrmicorn Fire, making fake mal accounts so I can rate Forest Fairy 5, 10 out of 10. Macaroni Uchisa, Link Joker, Leave Insanity, Kylo, King Rich Rock, Cassidy, Just Watch SAO Alice Underworld Part 2 Episode 1, Yikes, Do 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 Do, Jurgidius, Josh D, Jax, Jam Hands, Icon Scout, I will never get more Ace of the Diamonds, now I cry. I was hoping Rum would dislike Eva more than he did and validate my opinion. I tried manscaping with a straight edge razor. I heard Tuba talking about Dragon Balls, I think we're having Lonely Mountain Oysters for dinner, says Misaka. I did what Rem said, and now my sister is jealous because Sean said I can't do her too. Uh, I can't believe what? I made an account for this. Hey, Sean, can you cover Loveless for the Cats? Going into debt for the EDM album. Don't go into debt. Don't uh, go Glenn into Michael debt for Dolan. two idiots on the internet, please. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger Weeb. From the guy who did the thing that one time. Pharma Weeb's hot take of the week. George Edward Bottom lied about how trappy his bear trap was. Uh, Van died. Erica McCorkle. Do you accept the Spoon Man as your lord and savior? Danielle Riot, Daddy Rem, tell me a bedtime story. Country Fried Goth has emerged from her depression cocoon and decided to change her name. Cheese Monkey, Celestial Fox, Cat Girls, Best Girls, who so give them cute little paws. Castlevania, though, guys. Brock Hart for Jew Dudes, Edging Shadow till he lets out these ultimate life forms. Oh, fuck. Black Star, Burt Bartholomew Flem, Bento Kato, a bi girl seeking tickets to Yamfest. Been a while since I've changed my name on here, but I got a third 4.0. Can't believe it. I'm also changing my major from funeral. Arnold Melgarejo, or Goreo, uh, Angel for a Good Cause, and every day that raven comes to visit, Amazing Muffin, AJ Tunnels, Aisha Gudgie, Adele Girl, a moey piece of trash that's done nothing but watch laid-back camp for the past four days, and Dot. Now we move on to the Boy Wizard tier. What are they getting this week, Sean? Uh, aside from maybe one or two exorcisms, uh, they are going to be getting rodents to be their cars in the future. Perfect. Uh, and on that list, we start with Vincent Calabrese. Uh, you get, uh, a spring hair. This podcast is a ploy to get... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, I'm gonna be ill. Uh, you get a beaver. That mouse girl. Uh, you get pocket mouse. Tails Williams is forced to do lap tests. Kangaroo rat. Sporadic silver. Kangaroo mouse. Silent secondary. Pocket gopher. Scourge, best 20 bucks spent, LMAO. Okay, if I mispronounce this, I'm sorry. A coochie? <laughs> Oh, ooh la la. Ryan and Melina want to play Pathfinder. A Golti? Roska. The American Spiny Rat. That's what I call Sean. Rubbing in <laughs> Chase's laugh is my favorite sound. Blesmal. Rekumiko thanks Sean for putting up with his antics, and you know, he thanks Dylan for all his hard work editing podcasts. His, he will continue to support the show with multiple counts, and is now hoping for Sean to show Rem Hattori Bochi no Marumaru Sakatsu. Cane Rat. And a whole Cane Rat family. Mm-hmm. Lots of Cane Rats. <laughs> I don't even know what a cane rat is. Hold on. What do you look like? There's no picture on this site. Strange. Nightshade Blade wants to gush over magical girls. Oh. Oh, they are unfortunate looking. Poor things. Uh, <laughs> uh, you get a uh, guinea pig. Neti Rabbervaren sees on Mal in Baden Wurttemberg. Chinchilla. Monogatri is everything you guys said you like in an anime. This week they do some things very different way. Viscacha. Mike. Chinchilla rat, which is apparently different. Miguel Delion. The Dassy rat. Latino's 11th anime at age 12 was Oran High School Host Club, Come to Daddy, Sean Rollins, 2006. Degu? Kugor! Gundy. It's just that spy guy. Uh, Hadia? Hutia? Hushia? Mm. Episode 3 of Gushing Over Magical Girls gave me softcore euphoria vibes. Well, that's a... I didn't want to think about that, uh, so thanks for that. Um, New World Porcupine. Drew, 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 you said my name thrice, so you doomed. Old World Porcupine. Decade one of all father making Patreon accounts until Sean chose Remington Dragon Pilot. Packa. Crosskirk. Packarana. Crimson Reapers just because of the scythes. Tuco Tuco. Carver 271. Capybara. Blood Cell here to remind you that white blood cells are inferior. You need the red ones to thank and yank anyways. Hamster. Beethoven 1201. 
Muskrat. Anonymous. Vol. Anime mashup of the week, Mobile Suit Salary Man. <laughs> I'd watch that. Uh, Wood Rat. Animated Z. Jumping Mouse. And now we move to the inappropriate Joey Wheeler tier, where uh, Sean, as Joey Wheeler, is going to uh, provide you with a wild interpretation of uh, Pui Pui Mulcar. That's all yours. That's your lair. Uh, and on that list, we have Swedish Weeb recommends Redo of Healer. Oh, boy. Um, you know, it's actually an allegory for uh, kindness to others, but most importantly to yourself. It, 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 see, that, it's very heartfelt. Boom, another layer down. Rowdyo! Uh, you know, this one's, uh, this one's an allegory for, uh, women's suffrage, specifically. <laughs> sure, why not? You know? Uh, fish, then we have fishes, fritz, fish, 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 have fun. Uh, this, it gets into the deep, uh, idiosyncras- idiosyncrasies of, uh, language and... Uh, communication between uh, different peoples of the world. I mean, who would disagree? Have you heard them chattering to each other? Uh, then we get Eliza's breasts barrel rolled across Ezra's howling mouth. That's a lot to break down. Uh, it's gotta it's, be said. It, 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 you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, and another way to break down uh, Pui Pui Mocha is that it was all about the friends we made along the way. Well, what about the friends we lost along the way, Sean? Well, that depends on how uh, Nisha you're feeling that day. <laughs> uh, next up, we got my dear old mom. Ah, oh, man. It's about the the errors of capitalism, specifically, and why it's <laughs> uh, not an efficient system. Ah, uh, isn't everything about that at the end of the day? And last but not least, we got Blue Baron 15. And the allegory that uh, uh, Pui Pui Molka brings to you specifically is that there are no hot billionaires. Once again, you know, it's just, it's a side layer of the previous layer. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and damn, it, it ain't it the truth. You can be like, damn, that, that, that person's real high. As soon, as soon as their net worth goes from, holy shit, oh my god, you're so unfathomably rich, to richer than many countries. It's like, hey bud, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, nah, 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 nah. Uh, oh, all right, thank God. you all for tuning in. If you want to reach out for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, you can tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter or send an email over on to anime at context at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very, very much. And as always, don't fuck your sister. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I don't want to be inside Shrek. <laughs>